Hello folks, my name is Ken Karlowitz and welcome to my presentation, The Language of Light. The purpose of it is to enlighten folks to the various qualities of light, the angles of light, and their interplay on both prototype and model railroad landscapes. So let's get started. We're looking at a scene on the Ulster in Delaware in Roxbury, New York, and I'm looking sort of, uh, I would say, southeast at this point. If you'll notice, the sun is at a right angle to my direction of view. So if you notice the tree off to the right, you'll see a strong light on the left of the tree and a strong shadow to the right. But when I say strong, it's also it's the contrast that light creates, especially when you view it at varying angles, as opposed to just having it coming directly over your shoulder and shining on the subject, which we are going to see um, several frames from now. Here I have turned to my left and I'm looking directly into the sun, but yet because the sun is so low, you're still getting a nice accentuating of the details in the foreground, in the grass, along the right of way, all the small reeds that are growing up out of the ballast and also the light and dark interplay with uh, the tree on the right side of the frame. Now I've turned to my left and I'm looking northeast and again the sun is coming at a right angle to my angle of view. You can see the tree at the left you've got that strong light on the right side of the tree and a strong shadow on the left and again if you look at the little growth uh, in between the tracks and just the detail of the rails and the ballast you know this occurs because of the low angle of the sun and also the direction in relation to the um, way that the camera is viewing it now I've never took the picture where I turn around and look behind me to see what the light looks like but I would imagine it will look like this next frame this scene is at Coble Skill on my HO scale Delaware and Hudson model railroad. And this is the type of light that they would recommend when you'd open up your box of Kodachrome slide film years ago, and they would tell you what to set the camera on for a full sun, which of course uh, this is meant to emulate. There are some, still some shadows here, um, as you can see underneath the covered hopper at the right and the fuel tanks to your left. But it's still overall very even and I wouldn't say it's flat in its appearance but it's flat in the sense that it's very even across the whole scene. This next shot is some cement silos down in Haverstraw, New York down along the river and this is just I would call this like a whisper of light or a soft cloud of light that's falling on these silos. You can see all of the texture, the wonderful texture on these old cracked concrete silos and the slight hint of shadows in the nooks and crannies. Now the next scene here is um, something I shot just this past weekend in August of 2019. I was up to Beacon, New York. Um, but these old coal silos, there's four of them in a cluster. They just stand like towering above the, you know, over the little village there along the right of way. I looked up and I just found it to look um, very powerful and dramatic with that nice angular light that's hitting it from uh, off to the right there. So the light and shadow, of course, photography is all about light and shadow. And I just found this super interesting. And as a matter of fact, I am a texture and light junkie. I am always looking for texture, detail, weathering examples. And this was a scene that I took off the TV screen of a movie with Paul Newman that was filmed in Beacon, New York. And I just loved all this wonderful detail in the pickup truck all around the wheel well and the mud and just the ambient light and the rust, the patina around the, um, around the quarter panel. I thought this would be a great weathering example. Here's another scene from the same movie. There's Paul Newman sitting with his boots, soles facing outward. You can see the detail in his coat. Looks like an old Carhartt jacket. 
the body language of the gentleman sitting next to him slumped over, but I especially liked this faux brick effect, the peeling paint around the windows and the awnings, and as well, that beautiful patina and rust faded paint effect across the front of that old Ford pickup. So it inspired this scene actually down at um, Cherry Valley branch of my railroad. This I just shot um, to demonstrate, again, a scene with varying types of lighting. You'll often get a dramatic effect when you shoot, not quite into the light, but sort of at an angle to the light. And here we are looking with the light, basically almost coming off my left shoulder. Completely different effect. This scene right here was taken at uh, Mike Confalone's house. We had finished an operating session and we were having movie night. This is the movie uh, Cars. And I just thought what a brilliant rendition of this, um, this animated truck here. It's a Pixar movie, I believe. But I thought, you know what? The artist who did this would have had a reference uh, to base it on. And I just thought what a wonderful way that he's faded all the paint and the rust around the wheel wells I thought was just great as well. And the texture of the barbed wire and the oil drums, I'm sure this influence will show up at some point on my model railroad. Driving home the next evening, we're heading down the uh, interstate, 75 miles an hour, and I just point the iPhone out, phone out the window. Um, I'm still looking at the road, of course. Don't get nervous, folks. But I'm um, seeing all of this detail and rock texture and shadows and light on the trees so i'm just snapping snapping as i'm driving along and again it's a great reference for the details in the crevices and the nooks and crannies of your rock work perhaps achieved with some um, ink washes but also again just the light and shadow along the trees just beautiful i was working with my guys last fall and we were doing some residential gutter cleaning and I'm on the ground with a backpack on, cleaning up down below as the guys are blowing out the roof. And I look up and I just see this beautiful cross light hitting one of my guys. This is Claudio on the roof with the blower. And you can see the detail in the trees and just the rim lighting on the side of his arm and the hood and his legs. Um, just a beautiful, soft quality of light against that stark blue sky. This picture was taken along the Palisades Parkway a misty, spritzy day, um, not much for contrast, but the detail is there nonetheless if you get close. And I actually took this picture um, as were most all of these pictures. Almost all of the pictures in this presentation were shot with an iPhone. They're not intended to give you great depth of field, um, it's just so there's a context for what you're viewing. But the iPhone is a great device, or any smartphone is a great device, for creating visual sketches, as I call them. And these sketches um, are great for use with applications and your modeling projects. You Here's a shot on the Vermont Railway up near Sutherland, Vermont, south of Manchester. This is probably taken in 1988. The job is heading from Rutland down to Bennington. And I was out here alone, just enjoying a beautiful early morning light. Um, on the old um, VTR, on the old Rutland line that now operated by VTR. Here was a stunning image that I made up um, along Route 67. I believe this is Wollumsic, New York. And I waited for almost an hour to get this picture. And I, I was tempted to come down out of here to flush out the train. The old woman in the house had given me permission to use the farm, the tractor path up onto the hillside, which I excitedly took advantage of and um, there was about a 20 car train heading out of Hoosick Junction that day but the light here is magical and this is a wonderful cross light you can see that it works well because of the light and shadow effect if you look at the locomotives on the bridge just a slight uh, hints of light on the sides of the pillars but for the most part the, the locomotives and the train steal the show and of course that glorious vegetation in the foreground. Now this was taken with the GoPro. I, what I did was I used it to illustrate the importance of light to accentuate detail. So if I just had the light shining on here straight on 
you wouldn't see all the little nooks and crannies of all the things that are going on in here. The little staircase by the mill, the stack of ties, the tie plates, the splintered remains of the old ties. And at this point, I was, um, I was working to put the road in and I was shooting some video uh, to do a how-to down the road. So again, here's the um, example of why lighting can play such an important role on how details show up on your model railroad. Here's the 5015 heading up the branch um, past the abandoned Busing coal dealer. And um, this is all about mood. But you notice the light and shadow effect. The hillside is in shadow. Um, and this was intended to look like sort of like perhaps the fog burning off. Here's the 5007 doing the same task, different morning. But you can see um, there was a washout off to the right in front of the coal dealer. Uh, we'll see better examples of that as we move along. But again, check out the vegetation, the variegated textures of the landscape which are accentuated by the lighting. I mean, if you, if you had flat light, you would just see a bunch of different colors, but you wouldn't be able to differentiate so much the different textures and some of the little sprouts that you see off to the right of the locomotive. Here's a 4103 coming down into town, coming into the, um, coming into the siding. He's gonna drop his train, he's gonna work the mill. But the backdrop here is important because what I'm doing is, just so you know, I am actually, I photograph in the early morning light scenes that I think will work in particular places on the railroad. And then what I do is I work out from the backdrop and I try to blend the textures and the colors of the vegetation in the same varieties or tones, if you will, or colors uh, as what is on the backdrop so that when you look at the whole scene it feels credible and then of course the light that you are lighting the foreground with this is a very important thing a lot of guys will take pictures at two or three in the after two o'clock in the afternoon of a mountain backdrop and the mountains look very blue okay or they'll take them on a cloudy day and the light looks very blue and then they'll put a warm light lighting the foreground and it's just a direct clash the camera is a great friend to your model railroad development, even a smartphone, because taking pictures of your railroad will show you all the places where things aren't right. So you take a lot of pictures as you move along, even if it's not completely finished, you know? Here's early morning down in Cherry Valley at Cherry Valley Feeds. Yes, I have to replace the sign that says United Farmers Co-op and get some, get some good signs put up. But... Um, I guess this old Charlie Perkins here is waiting, like, where the heck are these guys already? They're supposed to be here to switch these cars out of here, and what's going on here? Well, the guys are on duty at 7, and this is supposed to look like 7 a.m. Um, inspired by a, an Edward Hopper painting by the same name. If you look up Edward Hopper and you look at 7 a.m., you look at the light. Okay, I've studied um, the work of Edward Hopper, and I'm a huge fan of his contrast light and shadow effect obviously this scene is not done the piping is not put down into the um you know the grain uh, silos yet but it's a work in progress um and again quick iphone photos to be used in the presentation to illustrate the concepts now here's another shot uh, of the same scene but with different lighting the lighting is a little more overhead the shadow and the contrast is a little more stark. Um, but again, it, it's a little more, maybe it's a little more dramatic. Um, and I think, again, as we talk about details in your model railroad, we also look at this guy and you got to choose, you know, uh, your figures carefully um, so they don't look hokey. Um, some guys don't like any figures on their railroad at all, but I think that the human element uh, brings a lot of realism to the railroad, especially in the body language and the gestures. Uh, something as simple as the hands on the hips. This guy looks like the foreman who refuses to hear any excuses about why the car is not spotted or why the respot hasn't occurred. He's just not taking no for an answer. So, like, you know, that conveys a thought and an added dimension of realism just in itself. 
couple inches off to the left. This is the uh, yard office here at, in the old freight house. And uh, the guys are just coming on duty. Um, again, a lot of textures. The scene in the background, those couple of houses there, that's an area called Mill Hollow. And that is not yet completed, but it's a work in progress. November light. Uh, went up north with, uh, with my buddy Howard Miller. We went up to see Cobleskill. By most people's standards, we, we, we missed the light. Um, but I thought this light was great in this portrait. It's a way that, I've, that I have not seen this structure rendered. It's always been rendered with the train coming by and the light is coming over your shoulder. But I am into photographing um, things, you know, in their aged state. So I'm okay that there's no train in this picture and that I can't see the sign that says Cobble Skill Coal anymore. I'm, I'm good with that. It is in its twilight. If you... And here we are about a half hour or so later, and you can see how the scene has changed just in that short amount of time. I think the model railroad needs to have a variety of moods that you view it in, especially if you're into photographing your railroad. You don't want all the pictures to look the same. I happen to shoot a lot of pictures um, with cross that are cross lit, where the contrast is strong and it adds an element of drama or mood to it. Here we are a short while later, and there is a time of day every day where the um, just after the sun has set and before darkness comes where for about 15 minutes the ambient light outside like you see falling on the trees uh, to the right side of the uh, tree there the orange tree and the incandescent lighting inside for approximately 15 minutes every day there is a symbiosis between the interior light and the exterior ambient where it all blends and everything is rendered where you can see all the detail in all of it. You could even see inside someone's house and see what posters might be upstairs in that upstairs bedroom uh, or the lady cooking dinner, you know, on the stove downstairs if uh, you can see through the front door into the kitchen. Here's a sunny day shot on my layout, and I would consider this light kind of, you know, it's nice. Um, nothing dramatic, just a sunny, sunny morning. Maybe it's uh, 11 o'clock or so in the morning. I strive to just get a certain balance or feel to the overall scene. Here's the Agway, uh, again, with a little bit different lighting. Um, not so even, a little more contrasty, a little more early morning, if you will. The angle of the light is lower. I wanted to have a railroad that felt and looked like places that I've been in upstate New York. Um, the actual mill, feed mill, at Central Bridge has a lot of overhead piping. And obviously mine does not have any of that. Moving a little more to the right, and now I've flipped the light around. Uh, instead of morning, now it's like late, late, almost sun's, you know, ready to sun to go down. Um, and this was inspired by the work of Edward Hopper. So if you want to give yourself a treat and a little more enlightenment about you know, the effects and the drama that lighting provides, check out Edward Hopper images on Google, and I think you'll have a blast. And now something that's a little more, I don't know, you could call it a little more ordinary. It's like a really hazy August, you know, morning. Um, the light's not that clear. It's not that crisp, but there's still enough to accentuate some of the details um, and just create a mood. It's a it's a mood unto its own. Uh, I don't have too many pictures like this um, in my collection of, of layout photos, but I thought this one just kind of said something a little different. And this is a favorite spot of mine right down the road from my house. And it's, um, this is right in Orangeburg, New York. Misty evening at dusk. Early morning, probably in March. Same place, looking in the opposite direction. This is a northbound on the CX, CSXT River Sub. A couple of CSX units coming through before the sun is even 
gotten high enough to light the whole embankment. Now, here we are on the river line. Classic shot coming across the trestle at Iona Island. and But the lighting is really flat. I mean, it, it's okay. If I didn't have any other pictures of this place, I would say this is this is a cool picture. But watch the difference. Now, take a look at the mountain above the tank cars. And now watch the shadows appear and watch the lower left corner. Okay? Now we've got the UP engines coming across, going north with a K train. But again, light, shadow, light, shadow is mimicked as you see the uh, columns. Um, but the light, dark, light, dark, light, dark symmetry across and then the shadow going across just above the units there, it breaks it up a bit. Looking a little to the right on a different day, but standing in exactly the same spot, here's a northbound again, early morning. The sun has just poked itself up above the hill and the mountain is still in shadow. But you've got the, the leaves and the foliage in the foreground just glowing. And you just got a little bit of rim light on the engine. But again, you're noticing the textures, okay? And this presentation is designed to have you become more observant to the many different varieties of light and the way they affect the mood or the level of detail that is visible or understood in the landscapes that we view.